Bob loved the lazy Saturday mornings where he had nothing to do and could sleep in. As he laid in his bed debating if he should get up, he smiled with content. He stretched as the morning sun brightened up his room. As he stretched, Bob couldn't help but notice his body felt different. The long hair tickling his bare shoulders gave him pause. Why has his shoulders bare? And when did his hair grow? Looking down, Bob was shocked to see he was wearing a silky, black nightgown with spaghetti straps. He was even more shocked to see cleavage exposed in the plunging v-neck of the pajamas. I must be dreaming, he said to himself. His higher voice sounded strange to his ears. Looking around, Bob quickly noticed his room had changed as well. Some of the changes were subtle, like his dresser looked the same but smaller. Other changes were obvious he was sure he didn't have a makeup table beside the dresser when he went to bed last night. As nervous as he was curious, Bob decides he should explore the rest of his apartment. He wondered if his roommate Steve also changed. He slowly, quietly pads his way down the hallway to the living room where he could hear Steve playing a video game. Peeking into the living room, Bob was disappointed to see Steve was still a man. That meant that whatever caused Bob to change was specific to him. Steve? Bob said nervously, hoping his roommate wouldn't freak out. Steve turned to look at who was calling him. The voice was unfamiliar. His eyes widened when he saw the girl in pajamas standing there. Oh, shit, he blurted out. Bob? Is that you? It is, Bob nodded. How did you know it was me? Call it a lucky guess, Steve frowned. And maybe I'm the one who changed you. What? Bob blinked. How? I'm not saying I did do it, I'm saying maybe. Steve replied. He took a deep breath as he tried to collect his thoughts before continuing. This is going to sound crazy, but I found a wishing well last night. I tossed in a coin and made a wish. You wished I was a girl? Bob laughed. Why would yo dash an O? Steve interrupted. I'd never do that. What would be the point? I wished I was living with a hot girl. I was drunk and lonely. I didn't think it would work, and certainly not like this. You wish to live with a hot girl? Bob's brow furled. You don't like living with me? I do, Steve replied. It's nothing against you. You're an awesome roommate. My intention was to have a girlfriend to live with, not to transform you. I get it, Bob replied. It's not a good wish, but I get it. Of all the things you could wish for. I know, Steve nodded. If I was sober when I made the wish, I could be rich right now. Or have a perfect physique. Or, actually, well, if I was sober I probably wouldn't have thrown the coin in in the first place. Well, you're sober now. And so am I, Bob snapped. Please tell me you remember where the wishing well was. Of course I do, Steve nodded. Why? You want to try it? You've never read or seen any stories about wishes? Making more never turns out well. We're supposed to be happy with what we already have. I was happy with what I had, Bob laughed. You changed me, not me. Now go get dressed and let's get going. I am dressed, Steve laughed. It's Saturday. Shorts and sandals are good for me. I'll be here waiting for you. I don't imagine you want to be seen in those pajamas outside, do you? Bob forgot he was wearing just the nightgown. He blushed as he headed back to his room to change. What the hell was he going to wear, he thought, hoping he had something comfortable and conservative. Opening the closet door revealed a number of one-piece dresses and lots of shoes. The dresser had underwear, tights, and the like. Pants that weren't of the short shorts or yoga variety were nowhere to be found. What was a man-turned-woman to do? Bob sighed as he picked out some yoga pants. He pulled them up and was surprised with how comfortable they were. No wonder girls liked wearing them. He found a t-shirt that wasn't too tight and paired it with a hoodie to cover up his cleavage. 
He realized he wasn't wearing a bra, so dug through his dresser until he found one that was boring enough to be acceptable. A pair of running shoes completed the look and he went to get Steve to show him where the wishing well was. This is it, said Steve as he pulled the car into the parking lot. I was wandering around aimlessly in the park and then, somehow, ended up here. I've walked through this park a thousand times but this was the first time I noticed a wishing well. Bob stared at the nondescript well. It certainly didn't look magical in any way. It looked simply like a well. So what did you do? asked Bob. Throw a coin in and make a wish? Yep, Steve nodded. Nothing more than that. Bob dug through his purse and removed a large, feminine wallet. He pulled out a quarter, closed his eyes and wished to be his male self. Tossing the coin into the well was tense. He watched as it disappeared to the bottom. Nothing happened. Maybe it takes some time, Steve suggested. You were still a dude when I got home last night. It wasn't until this morning that you were a girl. Yeah, that's probably it, Bob nodded. He hoped that was the case but had no way of knowing. Let's go home and see what happens tomorrow. Okay, nodded Steve. While we're out, do you want to go get something to eat? I'm starving. Yeah, me too, Bob nodded. I forgot to eat breakfast this morning. Funny how waking up as a girl takes away your appetite. Cool. Steve smiled. I know a great little pizza shop around the corner. Nothing fancy but the food is amazing. Gino's? Bob blinked. We go there all the time. Oh, yeah, Steve laughed. I knew that. It's just one of the places I like to take dates. Bob blushed silently. It took a minute for Steve to realize why, but when he did he opened his mouth to say something but nothing came out. He blushed even more than Bob did. Let's just go, Bob said finally breaking the awkward ice. And it's not a date. I know, Bob, Steve said quickly. I never would have. I mean, I just, you're not. I'm gonna shut up now. Good idea, Bob replied. He had to admit that Steve was kind of cute when he was flustered. Here you go, a large pepperoni pie for the lovely young couple, Gino said with a flair. He wasn't usually this flamboyant when the boys came in, at least not as far as Bob knew. We're not a couple, Bob told him quickly. Not yet, Gino said with a wink. My boy Stevie here. He's a real gem. You ought to give the young man a chance. He won't let you down. It's okay, Gino, Steve interrupted. We're just friends. This is Bo, Barb. She's visiting from out of town. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Barb, Gino bowed. I apologize if I was out of line. Italians love romance and I just want to see my boy Steve happy. I, it's okay, Bob forced a smile. I want to see him happy too. The pair ate their pizza quickly, in relative silence. Steve tried to start a conversation but it wouldn't go anywhere. When Bob tried, Steve couldn't reciprocate. It was an awkwardness that they'd never known in their relationship. The car ride home was equally quiet. Bob was preoccupied, his mind reeling at the fact everyone just assumed he and Steve were a couple. Steve, meanwhile, couldn't help but feel guilty for the predicament he'd put his best friend in. He'd change him back in an instant if he could. When the friends arrived home, Bob went straight to his room. He sets his alarm for 5 a.m., determined to go back to the wishing well and try it from morning to night. He changed into the pajamas he'd woken up in, climbed into bed and quickly drifted off to sleep. B-Z-Z-T. 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 Bob reached out and shut off the annoying alarm. It wasn't even light outside. Then he remembered why he said it so early. He confirmed he was still a girl inside, got up and got dressed in the same clothes he'd worn the night before. As he left his room and got his purse, he was surprised to see Steve was asleep on the dining room table. His laptop was beside him. 
Bob took a peek at his screen and saw that the search history was about how to reverse a wish. That's sweet, thought Bob. Not wanting to disturb his tired roommate, Bob headed quietly for the door. Before he reached it, though, Steve woke with a start. You're not leaving without me, are you? Steve said groggily. I, uh, Bob stammered. I'm just going back to the well. Either it'll work or it won't, but I'm going to try all day. I didn't think you'd be interested. Not interested? Steve laughed. I feel so guilty about what happened. I feel like I'm the one who should be there making wishes. Oh, I think you've wished enough, Bob smiled. Yeah, fair enough, Steve nodded. Believe me, Bob, if I could put things back to normal, I would. I never in a million years thought such a thing was even possible. I know, Steve, Bob nodded. I don't blame you. How could you know the wishing well was loaded, right? Yeah, exactly, Steve smiled. He wasn't certain if Bob was being sincere or sarcastic, but in either case he was happy Bob was able to make a joke. Well, hurry up if you're coming, Bob demanded. We're burning daylight. Steve jumped up and grabbed his keys. He was still dressed from the night before and didn't take so much as a minute to freshen up. He just splashed a bit of water on his face, ran his fingers through his messy mop of hair and grabbed his jacket. Okay, let's go then, Steve replied. The drive over was a lot less awkward than the previous night's drive. Bob seemed to be in a much better mood. Steve was grateful for that. There it is. Bob smiled, seeing the well from the day before. Let me out, I'll go try my first wish while you park the car. Okay, sure, Steve said, slowing his car to a crawl. Bob jumped out the minute it was and ran to the well. Steve watched with bated breath as Bob threw a coin into the well and closed his eyes. Steve could see Bob moving his lips, but even several minutes, he still remained a girl. Shit, swore Steve. He pulled his car up to the parking lot, taking a ticket and finding a space. I really hope he's not stuck like that. He walked over to Bob to see how things were going. I tried to word the wish in so many ways and nothing ever works, Bob frowned. Are you sure you didn't do anything else? You just tossed in a coin and made a wish? That's it, nodded Steve. Perhaps the well only grants one wish a year or something and I just got lucky? Hmm. Bob frowned. If that was the case, he'd be stuck like this for a whole year? What if it was ten years? Or every century? He couldn't wait around for that. I have an idea. Why not try a small wish? Something to test if the well still works or not. Okay, good idea. Steve nodded. You want me to try? Yeah, Bob nodded. Let's try to recreate whatever you did when you first made your wish. I'll watch and try to see if I can see anything I missed. If it comes true, I'll do what you did. If not, well, it's your 25 cents. Seems reasonable, Steve smiled. He thought about what to wish for. What small but noticeable thing could he wish for that only he and Bob would realize? He looked at Bob and pondered. What are you waiting for? Bob blinked. I just don't know what to wish for. Steve frowned. I guess it should be something small enough that no one else will pick up on, but noticeable enough that we'll both recognize if it comes true. Yeah, good thinking, nodded Bob. I don't know. Why don't you wish for a dash and O? Steve snapped. You can't know what I wish for. Otherwise, it won't come true. I, really? Bob blinked. How do you know that? Is that why my wish never came true? You knew what I was wishing for every time I tossed a quarter into that stupid well. Steve thought about it for a moment. Could that be the reason? It just might be. He'd best wish for something that Bob will never think of. He stared at his feminized friend and then it came to him. He knew exactly what to wish for. Steve closed his eyes and said a little prayer. Opening them, he tossed the quarter into the well, 
thinking hard about what he wished for. He whispered it under his breath as the coin plummeted into the watery depths below. Several moments passed as he watched the coin disappear into the dark, murky water. Steve looked up to see if anything had changed. What the hell did you do now? Bob snapped. Steve looked at his friend and smiled. Bob didn't look too happy, and seeing Steve's smile made him even angrier. A dress? You wished I was in a dress? And makeup too, Steve smiled. You definitely look the part of the girl now. Why the hell would you wish for this? Bob frowned. He tugged on the hem of the short black dress, trying to cover his bare thighs. The black pantyhose that covered his legs did little to hide his embarrassment. The heels on his feet just added to the shame. Look, we agreed the wish should be something that no one would notice, Steve explained. Who is going to notice a hot girl wearing a dress? Everyone? Bob laughed. I can feel every eye on me now. Oh, shit, Steve laughed. I never thought of that. But no one should bat an eye that a girl is wearing a dress. That's normal enough. And the point is, the wish actually worked. That's true. Bob smiled. There's hope yet. Why don't you try wishing me back to my old self then? Maybe it's gotta be you who makes the wish. Okay, sure, nodded Steve. I'll give it a shot. Steve tossed another quarter into the well, repeating his wish over and over as the coin fell to the water below. After watching the coin sink to the bottom, Steve looked up to see a still female Bob looking on expectantly. So it's not you who is special, eh? Bob frowned. Apparently not, Steve frowned. He'd hoped he could come back any time to make a wish. But maybe it is about other people knowing what you're wishing for. Why don't you try wishing for something that no one will suspect? Okay, Bob nodded. He looked as indecisive as Steve had when he was forced to make a small wish. So many things he could wish for, how could he decide? And then it hit him. Tossing the coin into the well, Bob tried to do exactly what he saw Steve to prior. He followed the quarter with his eyes as it disappeared beneath the water. He then looked up at Steve and then down to his own body. What did you wish for? Steve asked, his eyes looking where Bob's were focused. You didn't ask for bigger tits, did you? What? No. Bob snapped. I wish to be back in my old clothes. You did? Steve blinked. That doesn't seem like a very big wish. I wonder why it didn't work, unless... Unless? Bob's ears perked up. Well, I was trying to find anything on the internet related to wishes. Steve started. One common thread that kept coming up is that a wish cannot undo another wish. Is that true? Bob blinked. I have no idea, laughed Steve. I've never had a chance to test it until now. But it would explain why we cannot undo my wishes. That's true, Bob nodded. I will try to wish for something else then. I've not been able to have a wish granted. We're still not sure if you are a key component to this wishing well or not. Me? I'm not sure how that could be, Steve shrugged. Go ahead then. Let's see if you can change something small then. Steve watched as Bob sashayed over to the well. He couldn't help but stare at her ass as it moved to and fro as she walked. The heels made her legs look great and the short dress sealed the deal. He smiled as he got lost in thought. Oh me god. Bob squealed. It did work. It did? Steve blinked, returning to reality. What did? My wish. Bob laughed. But you're still a hot girl in a short dress, Steve pointed out. Why are you so happy? I didn't wish against your wishes this time, Bob grinned. I copied them. You what? Steve gasped. Looking down, he realized he was wearing a short black dress that looked very similar to the one Bob was wearing. Even more shocking was that it fit him, hugging all the right spots. I'm a girl? Yes, ma'am. Bob laughed. I thought it only fair. 
Now we're both equally motivated to find a wish that can change us back. I can't believe you'd do this to me, Steve frowned. I didn't mean to change you into a girl and you did this on purpose. You may not have meant it, but you did this to me too, Bob replied. And no matter what you say, you first turned me into a hot girl and then, second, put me into a sexy outfit. I don't even want to guess what third might be. I explained why. Steve said quietly. I know you were staring at my ass when I was walking around, Bob frowned. Like you said, everyone was staring at your ass, Steve smiled weakly. It's a great ass. And now yours is too, Bob grinned. We need to find a way to change back. Steve frowned. I can't be a girl. I don't want to be stuck like this forever. Then let's make another wish, Bob replied. Turning to the wishing well, Bob was shocked with what he saw. Steve let out an audible leap when he was what had stopped Bob in her tracks it's gone? Steve blinked. It is, Bob nodded. Where the well once stood, a small plaque remained. The language that was written on it was something neither of the new girls could recognize. Bob took a picture of it to check online later. What are we going to do? Steve asked desperately. I don't know, Bob replied in a whisper. The girls headed home to try to formulate a plan. They decided the best thing to do was to head online and see if any more wishing wells were in their neighborhood, there were. Two months later, Barb and Steph were still searching for a way to return to their former lives. They'd adjusted well enough to being girls. Too good, if you asked either of the girls. It seemed like the wish that changed what they were wearing also changed their sense of style. Bob loved short skirts and heels with tights. Steve also wore a lot of skirts from the start. I finally got a hit on the plaque, Steph said excitedly after checking her email. Someone recognized it. Really? Barb asked, rushing to see what the commotion was about. Did it say what the text said? Yeah, Steph smiled. It says it's a lost tongue from a dead civilization. The best translation they could come up with is all's well that ends well dot.